Hi, my name is Muhammad Awesome Ibrahim. Today I will present our work analyzing and leveraging the coupled L1 caches in GPUs. This work was jointly performed with my advisor, Professor Edwin Job, at William and Mary, and our collaborators at AMD. GPUs are a crucial component in most computing systems, as they provide orders of magnitude faster and energy efficient execution for many general purpose applications. To match the increasing computational demands, GPUs have been scaling in die size as shown in this plot. And as the die size increases, the number of cores increases as well. This leads to an increase in the volume of requests from the many cores, which puts pressure on the reply bandwidth from the few L2 slices. Therefore, the on chip L1 bandwidth is underutilized where the L2 bandwidth is bottlenecked. Also due to the private nature of these many cores, each core can independently request data from the L2 while being oblivious to other cores data. And this leads to data replication across the cores L1 caches. For example, we can see in this figure that multiple L1 caches are storing the blue cache line. However, before discussing our work, let me tell you about the time I wanted to bake cookies. For that, I needed the following four ingredients. I found out that I have two of these ingredients, which are sugar and eggs. However, I didn't have the other two ingredients. So for the missing ingredients, I had two choices. Either to go to the supermarket and risk waiting in line or even catching COVID, or I can go and bother my neighbors and ask, ask them if they have these ingredients and just get it from them. In this case, I found the missing ingredients at my neighbors and saved the trip to the supermarket. So you can see in this example that I am using my neighbors as an additional source of ingredients. And this is the main idea of our PACT 2019 paper. Now let us consider another situation when I only had one ingredient, which is X. I checked with my neighbors and I found that two of them had the chocolates and the other one has the eggs. So I went to one of them to get the chocolate. However, I'm still missing two ingredients. So I ended up going to the supermarket to get these missing ingredients. But what if we agree that each one of us is always responsible for keeping one unique ingredient? This way, I can get the missing ingredients from my neighbor and save the trip to the supermarket. So you can see here that by eliminating the ingredient replication, we can have more unique ingredients in the building. And this is the main idea of our PAC 2020 paper. However, this agreement means that every time I need ingredient that can be found in my neighbor's fridge, I have to communicate with my neighbor and maybe I will disrupt his or her activity. So the question now is how can we improve our agreement? So we decided that we can remove the fridges from our apartments and put them in the common area where all of us have access. This way, I can get the missing ingredients and save the trip to the supermarket without bothering my neighbors. We observed a similar problem in GPUs in which the conventional cache and interconnect hierarchy leads to low L1 bandwidth utilization and leads to data replication across the L1s, which reduces the collective L1 cache capacity. We found that the main source of such inefficiencies is the tight coupling between the GPU cores and the L1 caches. So to break such tight coupling, we propose decoupled L1 caches, which separate the L1 cache from the GPU core. By decoupling the L1 cache from the GPU core, we can aggregate and cluster them which can significantly reduce data replication and improve L1 bandwidth utilization. Overall, our proposed design improved the performance over a private L1 baseline by 75% on average and improved the performance per watt by 29.5% on average. And this is done by reducing the network area by 50%. This is our talk outline. I will start by a quick introduction and motivation. Then I will discuss our proposed designs to enable and leverage the coupled L1 caches. And finally, I will evaluate our proposed designs and conclude our work. As I mentioned before, in GPUs, the private nature of the pair core L1 caches enables each L1 cache to store any cache line from the full address range. And this leads to data replication across the L1 caches, 
which can be considered as a waste of caching resources. On the other hand, a shared L1 cache design can be used to eliminate such waste. Specifically, under shared L1 caches, each L1 cache is responsible for storing cache lines from a unique address range slice. So by doing that, the replication across the L1 caches is eliminated as shown in this figure. However, shared L1 caches require intercore communication. And to illustrate that, let us consider this requester core. If this requester core asks for the green cache line that doesn't belong to its assigned address range, then it will inject a remote request into the interconnect to the home of the green cache line so that it can fetch it. And then the home core will reply with the green cache line so that the requester can use it. So we can see that the shared L1 cache design can address the low L1 bandwidth utilization inefficiency and the data replication inefficiency across the L1 caches under the conventional GPU cache and network hierarchy. However, because of the intercore communication, it adds a network overhead. Also, an arbitration between local and remote requests is required to minimize disrupting the home core. Our analysis shows that the main reason of these inefficiencies or overheads is the tight coupling between the cores and the L1 caches. So the question is, how can we break such tight coupling? To answer that, I will now discuss our proposed decoupled L1 caches and how to leverage them to address these inefficiencies. To break the tight coupling between the cores and the L1 caches, we propose decoupled L1 cache or DCL1 for short. A DCL1 cache is an L1 cache separated from the GPU core. And under this design, the GPU cores now are light cores with no L1 data cache. These light cores are connected to the DCL1s via network number one as shown in this figure. In a similar way, the DCL1s are connected to the L2s via network number two. Note that such cache design it is still two levels with the DCL1s as level one of cache and the L2s as level two of cache. Decoupling the L1 cache from the GPU cores enable aggregating or merging multiple DCL1s to form one bigger DCL1 cache. As an example, in this 80 core system with 32 L2 slices, given these two light cores with their D corresponding DCL1 caches, we can merge these two DCL1s into one twice the size DCL1 cache. And the corresponding two cores can now access the bigger DCL1 cache via a two by one crossbar. The rest of the cores are connected to their corresponding DCL1 cache in a similar way. And the 40 DCL1s are connected to the 32 L2 slices using a 40 by 32 crossbar. We refer to this design as PR40 as we aggregate two DCL1s to form 40 DCL1s. Under such aggregated design, data replication is reduced as multiple cores are accessing a single caching resource. For the same reason, the DCL1s now have higher utilization. However, due to the lower number of DCL1s under aggregation, the weak L1 bandwidth is reduced. So the question now is to what extent can we aggregate? If all DCL1s are, are, are aggregated, then the replication is eliminated. However, the L1 peak bandwidth is significantly affected. So we will study the aggregation granularity. We observe that with higher aggregation, we will have less replication, which translates to lower L1 miss rate. However, higher aggregation results in significant loss in, uh, of peak L1 bandwidth because of using fewer DCL1 caches. As for the network area and power, we observe that with higher aggregation, both the net area and power requirement reduces compared to the private L1 baseline. And this is because with higher aggregation, we use fewer number of smaller crossbars in network number one. Overall, we choose BR40, or in other words, we choose to aggregate two DCL1s into one bigger cache for the rest of this work. And we choose such aggregation granularity as it pulls the performance by 15% based on our modeling, uh, modeling our design using GPGPU set. It achieved that while reducing the network area and power. However, it leads to only 19% reduction in the L1 miss rate, 
which indicates the presence of high data replication volume across the DCL ones. So we need to think about innovative ways to further reduce or totally eliminate the replication across the DCL ones. So to eliminate data replication across the DCL ones, we use a shared cache organization across the DCL ones in the system, where each DCL one cache is assigned a unique slice of the address range. And to connect these 80, 80, light, 80 light cores in the 80 core uh, system that we assume, to connect these 80 light cores to the 40 shared DCL1 caches, we use an 80 by 40 crossbar in network number one to enable communication between a given core to all DCL1s. And the DCL1s are connected to the L2 using a 40 by 32 crossbar. We refer to this design as SH40. Overall, SH40 leads to a significant performance boost and L1 miss rate reduction because of eliminating data replication across DCL ones. However, shared 40 incurs high network area and power overheads. Also, some replication in sensitive applications may have affinity towards the private L1 cache organization and may suffer performance loss under the shared 40 design. Therefore, we need to address the network overheads and the poor performance of some applications. To achieve that, we propose a clustered shared DCL1 caches to reduce data replication across the DCL ones while managing network area and power. We propose to apply shared cache design across a cluster of DCL ones instead of all of them. For example, assuming an 80 core system with 40 DCL ones, we apply a shared cache organization across these four DCL ones, where each DCL one only serves a quarter of the address range. A cluster of cores, which is eight in this example, uses a small eight by four crossbar to communicate with any of the four DCL ones in the cluster. In a similar way, we form clusters of eight cores and four DCL ones across the system. Under this design, data replication is eliminated within a cluster, as shown by the unique patterns for each DCL one in, in a given cluster. And overall, replication across all DCL ones is reduced. Also with this design, we don't need to connect all DCL ones to all L2s because of the shared nature of the DCL ones within a cluster and the shared nature of the L2s. We only need to connect each DCL one to a subset of L2s that serve the same address range. For example, DCL10 and DCL1 number 36 in this figure are connected to L2 slices from 0 to 7 as they serve the same address range. Given such a cluster DCL1 design, the question now is what is the proper cluster size or how many clusters should we have? Based on our experimentation, we choose 10 clusters, which we call as shared 40 plus C10, which divides the 40 DCL1s into 10 clusters as it posts IBC, reduces the replication, and reduces network area and power. One more advantage of using smaller crossbars in network number one under the clustered cache design is the possibility of operating them at a higher frequency. This figure shows that a small 8x4 crossbar, which is used in the shared 40 plus C10 design, can operate at 4.5x higher frequency compared to the 80x32 crossbar, which we use in the baseline. So we propose to double the frequency of the small crossbars in network number one under shared 40 plus C10, and we refer to this design as shared 40 plus C10 plus post. Now I will evaluate our shared 40 plus C10 plus post design, and then I will conclude our talk. These two figures show the performance of shared 40 plus C10 plus post on the y-axis in terms of IBC for both the replication sensitive and the poor performance being replication in sensitive applications and the results are normalized to the private L1 baseline. We observed that shared 40 plus C10 plus boost achieves an average IBC improvement of 75% and up to 8X for the replication sensitive applications. As for the poor performing replication in sensitive applications, shared 40 plus C10 plus boost incurs 5% performance drop on average. And overall, across all applications as shown in this S curve, on the left hand on the right hand side, shared 40 plus C10 
plus post can provide performance benefit for the replication sensitive application and can recover the performance loss of the poor performing applications. This is achieved while reducing the network area by 50% and maintaining the network power compared to the baseline. More results and case studies can be found in the paper. To conclude, we observed an opportunity to employ decoupled L1 caches in GPUs to eliminate data replication across the L1 caches and improve the L1 bandwidth utilization. However, to get such benefits from the decoupled L1 cache design, we aggregated the DCL1s to improve the bandwidth utilization. Also, we clustered this aggregated DCL1 and employed shared L1 cache design to limit the data replication. Our proposed design improve the performance by 70% on average for the replication sensitive application and incur 5% performance loss for the private friendly application in sensitive applications. And it is doing that while reducing the network area overhead by 50%. Thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in my talk on Tuesday, 2nd of March in session 5B. Thank you.